In this video, I'm going to be talking about classification of alcohol. And um, there are two ways you can classify alcohol. You can classify alcohols based on the number of carbons, or you can classify them based on the number of hydroxy group, that is OH group, that is present in the compound. Now, the first one for classification based on the number of carbons, we have the primary alcohols. And this primary alcohol is represented as one degree, okay? And the secondary alcohol is represented as two degrees. The tertiary alcohol is represented as three degrees. Now, okay. how do you know if it is primary alcohol? So primary alcohols, the carbon that is bearing the alcohol group would be attached to just one other carbon, okay? It will be attached to just one other carbon. That is how you know it is primary alcohol. Now, when it is secondary, the carbon bearing the OH group will be attached to two other carbons. And if it is tertiary, the carbon bearing the OH group will be attached to three other carbons. So that is why this these are used to represent them, okay? So one carbon, two carbons, and three carbons. Now let's see some of the examples. So these are the examples of primary alcohol. You can clearly see here that this carbon that is bearing the OH group here is attached to only this carbon, okay? So just one carbon. Now in this case, you also have this carbon that is bearing this OH group is attached to only one other carbon, okay? This one here, you have the bonds clearly spelled out. So you can see here that this carbon is attached to only one of this carbon. The rest is hydrogens, okay? Now for this carbon, this is the one bearing the OH. So when you are dealing with classification, you are not bothered with all the other things happening, right? So you are gonna just concentrate on the carbon that has your OH group. So for this one, this carbon that is bearing the OH group is attached to just this carbon. So these are examples of primary alcohols and this is how you go about classifying them when it is based on the number of carbons. Now let's go to the secondary alcohols. For the secondary alcohols, like I said earlier, that the carbon bearing the OH group will be attached to two other carbons. So for this carbon here, this is the one that bears the OH group and that is the carbon of interest. So you see that this carbon is attached to one of this carbon and two of this. So one, two. So that is why it's secondary alcohol. Now let's come to this one. This is the carbon of interest. That's the one bearing the OH group. It's attached to this carbon and this carbon. Okay, so secondary alcohol, two carbons, secondary alcohol. Then this one, the carbon of interest is this, is attached to this carbon here, and then this one. Okay, so you see two carbons, secondary alcohol. Now for cyclopentane here. Now in line structures like this, they do not write out the atoms, but we know that each of these parts is carbons, okay? Each of these parts is carbon. So clearly looking at this, we can see that this carbon here is attached to this other carbon and this other carbon. That is two of them, right? So that is why it is secondary alcohol. All right, so examples of tertiary alcohols. As I said earlier, that the carbon bearing the OH for tertiary alcohols will be attached to three different carbons. So for this first example, we have this carbon as this, the one bearing the OH group. This is the carbon bearing the OH group and it's attached to one of these, two, and then three, okay? So that is why it's tertiary alcohol. Now let's come to this one. The carbon of interest will be this, that's the one carrying the OH group. So you have one carbon, two carbon, three carbons, tertiary alcohol, three. Here, each of these is carbon. And this is a methyl group, which is CH3. So that's also carbon. 
So you have one carbon, two carbon, and three. So three carbons, tertiary alcohol. And this one, this is a little bit tricky, okay? So um, the bonds are not spelled out, so you just have to figure it out yourself. And um, we can see that this carbon is the one that is close to this OH, right? So that's the carbon bearing the OH group. And why will you say it's this and not this? That is because if you draw this bond out, this will be COH, this will be C, hold on. That will be C attached to this other C at the end here, this one, and then attached to the CH2, okay? Then you have OH and you have the CH3. Now, when you are not so sure, please just draw it out, okay? Now, if this is the case, you can clearly see that it has one, two, three carbons, okay? It can be this because this already has, it can be this carbon. This has two hydrogens, right? So it means that this is one bond, then two hydrogens, if you write them out, will be here, okay? And of course, this other bond will be to this carbon. So you already has one, two, three, four. So it can't be this carbon. It can only be this because this needs to have this OH to complete its octet. So that would be the carbon bearing the OH group. So in some cases, they can give you questions like this just to make things you know, more harder and uh, com more confusing. Okay, so, but just know once you're able to figure out which one is which, then it becomes easy, okay? All right, let's go to the next classification. So classification of alcohol based on the number of OH present. And the first one here is the monohydric alcohol. Now, monohydric alcohol are those ones that have just one mono, one, one OH present or one hydroxyl group present, okay? And dihydric, di means two. So dihydric is those alcohols that contain two OH groups, okay? And then we have the trihydric, tri is three. So when you see tri, you know that it means that it has three different OH groups. So trihydric, tri hydric alcohols, we have three different OH presents. So let's look at some of the examples. For the monohydric alcohols, we have this. So this is just one OH group, one OH group, one OH group, and one OH group. So these are all monohydric alcohols, okay? And then if we go to the dihydric alcohol, we see here you have one of these OH and another one. So this is two of them. And this one you have one and then two. You have here one and two. Then for this D, you have one and two. So you can clearly see that it is two different OH groups that are, that are present in, this, in each of these compounds. So this makes it dihydric alcohol. Hmm? So the last one I have here is the trihydric alcohols. And these ones have three OH groups. So we can see them clearly, three of them attached. So you have three, three OH groups present in each of these compounds. So this type is classified as trihydric alcohol. Okay.